Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today on SRF's Q2 and H1 FR24 earnings conference call. I trust all of you have had the opportunity to go through the results presentation shared with you earlier. I will initiate the call by briefly taking you through the key highlights for the period under review, following which we will open the forum to have a Q&A session. We witnessed lower revenues and profitability during the quarter with both our chemicals and packaging films business facing headwinds. During the quarter, gross operating revenues declined 15% via Y to 3177 crore. EBIT was lower by 23% via Y to 533 crore. Profit after tax came in at 301 crore in Q2 SR24, lower by 37% via Y. Coming to our segmental performance, in Q2 SR24, our chemical business reported lower revenues of rupees 1,426 crore, down 22% YOI. With the chemicals within the chemicals business, specialty chemicals witnessed subdued demand owing to ongoing destocking and inventory rationalization by customers for certain key products. And we believe that we have seen a large impact of the same in Q2 FY24. While we continue to encounter rescheduling of some orders, we have not witnessed any cancellations. We remain optimistic that Q3 would be better than Q2, and Q4 will witness more reasonable levels. Therefore, we firmly believe that H2 will be better than how H1 panned out. We also believe that fundamentally, the business is in good shape, both on new products and capability. Cycles are a part and parcel of any business. In such a scenario, marginal growth is also a fairly good position to achieve. This is further supported by the cautiously optimistic outlook shared by major agrochemical companies for 2024. We are con consistently expanding our product portfolio, having introduced six new products in H1, comprising of four in agro sector and two in pharma. Our pipeline for complex products and AIs also remains on track. Over the past few quarters, we have successfully commissioned flexible and dedicated facilities are and are in the process of capitalizing projects close to 1,100 crores in the second half of this fiscal. Furthermore, the board announced a capex of rupees 235 crore for setting up a new and dedicated facility at the age for the production of an agrochemical intermediate. These initiatives signify our strong confidence in the segment's potential to create substantial value for all stakeholders as we work towards process improvement and increasing asset utilization levels in FI25. In our chlorochemicals business, we witnessed lower volumes and realizations in a seasonally weak quarter for the domestic market, as well as Chinese dumping, leading to lower revenues and profitability in Q2. In addition, the demand environment for some industrial chemicals remained subdued due to sluggish growth witnessed in agrochemicals and pharma industry. Having said that, in Q2, we achieved highest ever MDC domestic sales for a quarter with a significant increase in market share. Diamond also delivered study performance and, are now and is now serving customers across 27 countries with a strong future growth potential. Q3 should witness demand uptick from domestic players as stocking for 2024 season begins and Q4 should witness volume traction from U.S. customers. As we transition into the second half of the year, our expectations are focused on several promising developments in the second. We anticipate an uptick in pricing for HSC, especially in the key markets like India, Middle East, South, East, South Asia, and the United States. Industrial chemicals are also expected to perform better than H1, owing to higher demand and price expectation. Additionally, it is worth noting that our new HSP project should go online very soon, which will add to our capacity and allow us to cater to our key local and global customers. The company remains committed to prioritizing the commissioning and ramp up of our ongoing projects. Here, I am pleased to share that we have now commissioned our PTFE plant. This project experienced delays due to challenges in obtaining support from our technology partners. In response to this, our internal teams proactively took the initiative and commissioned the project. This, 
This not only underscores the impressive R&D and engineering capabilities of our in-house team, but also highlights our self-reliance and adaptability to cater to tough situations. <coughs> we believe that the product has received a positive response from some of our customers, both locally and internationally. While there will be some time for the product approvals to come in, say within the next six to nine months, the ramp-up will be faster than what we had envisioned earlier. In our packaging films business, SRF reported a decline of 16% in revenues to Rs. 1,122 crore during the quarter. Some of the decline in the business revenues can be attributed to lower price of key raw materials and some to the oversupply situation in the industry. While the ongoing challenge owing to significant demand and supply mismatch continues, the business is actively focused on improving profitability through operational efficiency initiatives, expansion of value-added products in both BOPET and BOPP, implementation of cost-saving strategies, and securing additional contractual savings. I am happy to share that this quarter, the board has approved an investment of Rs. 475 crore at Indore for establishing a dedicated capacitor grade EOPP film line aimed at expanding in business adjacencies. This is our foray into manufacturing of higher value added products to cater to demand emerging from manufacture of electronics and EV sector in India. A more detailed rationale for this is available in the presentation that has been uploaded to the stock exchanges. The aluminium foil facility is now in trial phase with commercial production expected soon. The project is expected to be value attractive to the business as customers remain similar and demand strong. Overall, in this segment, market trends point to the persistent imbalance in demand and supply, particularly in BOPET, which is expected to impact performance for the next few quarters. SRF will continue to focus on value-added products and ramp up the aluminum foil project at a fast pace. Moving to our technical textiles business, we reported a steady performance. During Q2 FI24, SRF successfully completed the phased capacity enhancement project for its TCA value chain. Further, progress in the expansion project from belting fabrics and polyester industrial yarn remains on track. Market trends indicate a consistent growth in various cycle segments, ensuring continued demand for nylon tire cord fabric. Additionally, the government's emphasis on infrastructure development is expected to drive increased demand for belting fabric and polyester industrial yarn. Lastly, in the other segment, imported fabrics, SRF attained all-time high domestic sales and a bit primarily driven by strong demand for our products, including value-added products. SRF has been able to capture maximum share of the growth that has happened in the market and the outlook suggests continued healthy demand in the near term. For laminated fabrics, SRF achieved record sales in H1 with the plant operating at full capacity. However, an oversupply situation persists and SRF anticipates market challenges due to new capacity additions while expecting stable demand. Coming to our balance sheet, our net debt increased from roughly about 3,250 crores as of March 31, 2023 to about 3,900 crores as on 30th September 2023. This increase is primarily owing to our capex of around Rs. 1400 crore in H1. Additionally, we also wit are also witnessing an impact of the increased interest rates both on the rupee as and the US dollar borrowing, which is leading to higher interest costs being charged off to our people. Global interest rate cycles are now kicking out, and some positives should be witnessed on this account over the next 12 to 18 months. In our endeavor to achieve benchmark performance across functions, we, are, we were recognized with a slew of prestigious accolades in this quarter. We received the Best Corporate Cash Management Services and Best Corporate Technology Adaption, Adaptation towards awards from HDFC Bank, highlighting our excellence in financial and technological domains. Additionally, SRF's Technical Textile Business won the Metaxel Export Award for outstanding export performance for the year 22-23. On the social level, SRA Foundation was honored with the Shiksha Bhushan Award at the 27th Bhama Shah Samman Program by the Government of Rajasthan. Additionally, the SRA Foundation won CSR Times Award 2023 Gold 
for its rural education program and earned a certificate of appreciation under the operational kayakal program by the government of uttar pradesh for development of infrastructure facilities in government schools these accolades underscore srs commitment to excellence across various sectors in conclusion despite the challenges faced in various domestic and international markets we maintain a positive outlook for the second half compared to our first half while the near term prospects for our packaging films business is weak our overall optimism is primarily based on our core chemical business and a stable technical textile business going forward over the years we have developed a world class infrastructure nurtured exceptional r&d capabilities and secured ample resources to invest in emerging opportunities across diverse chemical sectors particularly in agro and pharma while some sectors may encounter transient challenges we hold strong confidence in our chemical division driven by our r&d breakthroughs which we believe will consistently drive substantial growth and enduring value for all stakeholders on that note i conclude my remarks and would be glad to discuss any questions comments or suggestions that you may have i would now like to ask the moderator to open the line for the q and a session thank you very much thank you we will now begin with the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and 1 on the touch tone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handsets while asking questions Ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles The first question is from the line of Rohit Nagraj from Centrum Broking please go ahead Yeah uh thanks for the opportunity uh so uh, first question is on the uh, specialty chemicals business so you mentioned that uh, Q3 will be better and Q4 probably would be better than that uh this uh, growth will be primarily driven from volumes and whether it will be the uh, incumbent business or the newer projects that we have commissioned uh, just uh, like to you know understand a little color on that thank you so uh, the way we look at it rohit is the fact that uh, there have been some volume negatives that we saw in q2 now when when we are looking at it from that perspective the uh, there is some uh, pick up that is likely to happen some of the orders from the customers have kind of got uh, uh, delayed and that's the, that's where the volume pick up we are talking about in q3 and q4 coming through so that's uh, the existing products also you would remember that over the last uh, i think 6 months or uh, about 12 months major major capital expenditures have been published uh, my sense is it would probably including the npp and the pip be about 800 900 crores so some of the positive and new products that we have also launched that we talked about also should come through in q3 uh, but the majority of those those would probably come in fy 25 so that's how we would look at it okay sure thank you uh, so second question is uh, just to view on the uh, segment wise capex for fy 24 and uh, 25 So again, I don't think the the position on that has changed. Right? I think uh, FY24 our total capex, including land, uh, is roughly likely to be about 2,900 to 3,000 crores. Uh, if the, that land does come through, uh, which is which we are estimating to be in the range of about 400 450 crores, uh, that would be the total capex. 80 85% of that capex would be chemicals business. and the balance would be other so that's how it is still structured i don't think that has changed uh, even one bit and fy25 also would be uh, similar in terms of the intensity will be 29 3000 and uh, proportion of 85% from the spectrum absolutely do it sure uh, this is helpful thank you and best of luck sir thank you thank you the next question is from the line of sanjesh jain from icici securities please go ahead yeah good afternoon rahul ji uh, thanks for taking the question uh, first on the uh, refcas side uh, it's slightly backward looking but uh, just curious to understand uh, we were anticipating the stocking up for the uh, stocking up in the us market the hfcs uh, ahead of the next phase down uh, it appears that that uh, really hasn't played out just wanted to understand is it that chinese are dumping more 
and the quota have been filled uh, what has caused this uh, uh, refilling kind of a benefit not playing out the way probably we would have anticipated <coughs> So, thanks, Sudhish. Uh, I agree that it is a slightly backward-looking question, but the, the point to make is that, yes, uh, there was some expectations of, uh, of let's say, the uh, U.S. market panning out in Q1. That did not come through. Uh, but I think the, uh, instead of looking at it from a backward perspective, we should look at it from a forward perspective. What I can certainly say is uh, the order book seems to be in good shape from a Q4 perspective for, for the international sales, specifically U.S. sales. Some of the very large customers that we have uh, in the U.S., we've already kind of uh, done ordering with them, or, or the the, uh, the order their orders have kind of been frozen for FI for calendar 24 and uh, for 25 as well. So I think that's in good shape. Uh, why did that not happen in terms of what what was going on? I think there were various dynamics with respect to Chinese that were playing out in the market, despite whatever be the uh, the pricing situation. So a lot of dumping happening into even the U.S. market uh, during that time, which created that kind of a situation. I hope it answers that. No, no it's fairly clear. Uh, just on the 24 and 25, and now the tie-up has happened, which gives us a much better visibility. Um, are the pricings are also done that or it will be more dynamic and it's more volume kind of a tie-up and uh, so it is not a volume tie-up pricing ranges are, are also tied up but unfortunately I can't tell you anything beyond it got it got it so that's that's clear on the R32 side I think we anticipated to come in November uh, kind of a thing are we are we in, in line with that anticipation uh, I think end of November or mid of December is when this will get done. Uh, it is now getting through to a technical completion position, and hopefully by uh, mid of December we will we will be commissioning the 32 as well. Some delay, I agree, but I think it was more technical than anything else. Got it, got it. And and on the speciality side, uh, again, uh, sorry to ask the similar line of question. Uh, but I think some of the guidance is what we are seeing now, uh, incrementally coming in. Um, the the agrochemical side, at least it appears that the volume pressure can persist in the H2 as well. Uh, we we are not anticipating any such risk as of now. So, again, uh, Sanjay, to be very frank about it, on the volume side, we, we believe that there is some pressure, no doubt on it. Uh, but I have kind of articulated it out that in Q4 we should do better. There are some positives that we are looking at. Uh, again, like I said, we, do, we have not seen any major order cancellations coming in. So we are fairly confident of a certain growth number even in the specialty chemical business, uh, even during FY24 as a whole. Uh, so I don't think uh, in the current market there are many people guiding for a growth in, in specialty. I think we are probably the uh, we are probably fairly confident of a single digit growth at least coming through in speciality chemical space. The single digit growth in the H2 we are talking or for the full year 24. Whole of FI 24. Whole of FI 24. Um, that's great. One last question on the PTFE side. Uh, yes, I think we'll have to come back in queue. Other people also have to ask questions. I will come back in the queue. I will come back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you, Rahul Ji, and Thank you for the coming to us. Yeah. Thank you very much. Before we take the next question, we request participants to please limit your questions to two per participant. We take the next question from the line of Chintan Modi from Hightong Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thank you. Uh, so, with respect to uh, ref cases, Slightly louder, Chintan. Can't hear you. Yeah, sir. Can you hear me now? Is it better? Yes. Okay. So, with respect to ref gases and the quotas coming into place, uh, can you tell, like, you know, uh, explain uh, how the mix will change between R32, 125, and 134A, and what would be the total volume impact for us in U.S. market? To be very frank with Chintan, it's a, it's a position that will play out over, over a period of time. The way we look at it is that there will always be a GWP equivalence position in the U.S. market that will play out. Now, as GWP equivalence plays out, I think more of 134A and 32 should start to uh, proliferate more. Uh, 
but again that also depends on the local market where production is is there so it's a it's a position that we will also see how it plays out, how it plays out majority of the local players will start to shut down some of their and balance out some of their uh, uh, existing capacities and based on that they will do a, a, a quota positioning in terms of what the quota they have and how much do they want to buy from uh, outside import either from china or from india uh, the way it will probably work out is 125a starts to 125 uh, starts to go away first then it will be 134a and then 32 but i think it's a position that will probably get more visible during 25 uh, and 26 24 is po- probably more uh, understood well okay sure and uh, with respect to uh, power and fuel cost uh, uh, can you share like what was the savings on uh, say on a q on q basis or a by by basis in terms of per unit cost Uh, sorry, uh, Chintan, you will have to come back on that separately. I don't have the number uh, right in front of me. It's a mix of various businesses that that pans out. If you are looking at it only from a technical perspective, it could be different. If you are looking at it from a technical textile business perspective again, it could be different. We will have to uh, we look at the numbers and come back to you on that. While coal prices have witnessed a positive impact in CPP operations. Uh, mainly due to low demand of coal in china and europe i don't have the exact unit by unit numbers okay sure and lastly on the capacitor grade films uh, is this more of an imported product currently or uh, there are suppliers in the uh, domestic market today and also along with that if you can explain a little bit of economics like uh, how it would be better than the, our existing films business So on the capacitor rate, in the first question that you have asked is there are uh, existing players or not? There are a couple of existing players that have some capacities, uh, not not uh, doing too well as such uh, because of of their other uh, issues that are going on. Uh, what we believe is that this is a film that the requirement of which will continue to go up. Uh, India is going on and uh, looking at electronics manufacturing in India. therefore the need for capacitor grade films is high uh, the demand is expected to grow at roughly about 10% per annum the current people that are there in the businesses are not operating it very effectively and therefore we believe we will have a very large play in the business uh, the demand uh, stems from consumer electronics and energy storage systems major major ones and ev chargers and other applications in in the, that space so that's our uh, strategic rationale around it Uh, we want to become a global uh, opportunity to manufacture these in india to become a credible alternative not just to indian producers but international guys as well so that's the way we are looking at it there are a couple of indian producers also sir how much is demand today these capacitors roughly speaking the demand is uh, about uh, let's say 40000 15000 tons okay got it sir capacity at a rate is about 7000 tons majority of this is still being imported okay got it sir that was helpful sir thank you thank you thank you the next question is from surya patra from philip capital please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity sir uh, sir my first question is on the uh, this hfc now since the quotas are set and all that Uh, you have commented something on that but uh, mm, uh, in terms of the volume uh, any sense that if you can provide sir because uh, as it was earlier understood that uh, the ban on chinese supplies or chinese dumping on in the us uh, there is no ban sir uh, ha ban in the sense uh, uh, implied ban i mean uh, the anti dumping duty uh, so because of that it was expected that uh, there would be people would be bit protected from chinese dumping in the us market but now it looks like that is no longer the case so if that is the case if you can give some clarity about the volume progress that we would see in the calendar 24 based on the quota that has been set for our clients and all so that would be helpful so like i said sudha the, the the position that we are taking on this is with some of our large customers we have already tied up volumes for calendar 24 to a certain extent for 25 as well uh, i think that should augur well for us we are also looking at various uh, refillers that have the quota in the us market to be able to supply to them in volumetric quantities uh, the the way we are looking at is that by fy 25 uh, 
and exiting 25. Our capacity on HFC should probably be about 80-85% utilized in total. What mix, what time is something that the market position will play out on based on which we will we have the ability to use our capacities appropriately. So that's how we are looking at it, Surya. To be able to give you a, a, a projected number on each of the gas separately is, is too detailed an exercise for me correct, to be able to do. Correct, correct. But when you are giving a view about 25 also, sir, so you are factoring the um, SIPT uh, in the emerging market from HCFC to HFC? Or it is just from the... So, uh, starting 2025, January, uh, uh, even in the emerging market, the phase down of CHFC, HCFC, that is uh, uh, scheduled, right? So, so, that should boost the demand for HFCs in the emerging market. No, the way we are looking at is transition into 32, which is the 22 replacement, it already happened, mostly in the, even on the emerging market side. So I don't think that has too much of an impact. Yes, the growth is going to be significant. The Indian market is going to be a large one. And therefore, if you remember, I had also talked about that the domestic market and this should become a larger market going forward. So that's something that will play out. Okay. But whether it is because of the shift happening, I don't think so. Okay, sure. So uh, for second question is on the this PTFE project, sir. Since uh, although it it, has, it is coming slight with slight delay, but obviously that would have positioned you better in terms of the customer acquisition, in terms of the product approval and all that. So uh, now about the ramp up of that project and uh, uh, in terms of the utilization, let's say by next year, uh, any sense that you are sharing? So? So again, the way we are targeting this uh, is the fact that for FY25, because uh, cal the balance ones of FY24 will probably yeah. be used for the approval process is coming through. For FY25, we should get to a decent uh, capacity utilization. Uh, but I can tell you this, Surya, that from what we had envisioned when we had started this project, right, to a three to four year ramp up timeline, of the PTFE project. I think the ramp up is going to be significantly faster than that. So hopefully in the next two years or so, uh, so FI25 and FI26, it should be fully ramped up. Uh, hopefully we can do this even earlier and move to speciality grades on this. Okay. So that's and, the target here, Sutra. And is it just on the extension of this portfolio of PTFE, uh, can you share something or you will take some time to share update about the, the additional the product? portfolio means what? the additional products, uh, specialty fluoropolymers, No, no. Uh, so we have already uh, announced the project for specialty right. fluoropolymers, right? Which yeah. is CVTF, FEP, and FKM. Right? Yes. Yes. So yes. That's, that's a two-year project that is currently on. PVTF might see some delays, given where uh, our, our position on land is. Uh, but FEP and FKM are pretty much online, Surya. Okay. Just a, one simple question, sir, about the new projects uh, that was due to uh, commission this year. So uh, whether it is whichever segment, ref gas or it is uh, the flora speciality and all that. So uh, I think there is some delay before, uh, compared to the kind of earlier timeline. Is it a kind of a planned uh, considering the kind of a demand situation and the, this thing or it is? Uh, you are right to a certain extent when you say that there is some delay. Uh, but, but on the speciality chemical side, I would say the delay is largely due to some uh, supply chain issues, some some uh, procuring of certain key, uh, let's say engineering components and and those types. Not not with respect to uh, let's say delaying from a product or a timeline perspective, time to market uh, perspective. So that's not the case. It's largely because some of the supply chain issues we face during uh, this period which has led to a couple of months delay in uh, some of the projects in the speciality chemical space. Uh, in the fluorochemicals, uh, be it PTFE or uh, the 32 projects, yes, there were delays. Uh, PTFE, the delay was largely due, due to the fact that there was uh, uh, difficulty in obtaining uh, visas for our technology suppliers. That did not come through, so we had to commission it online. We, our engineers did it, so that took some uh, uh, learning exercise around it. Uh, on uh, on 32, uh, I think certain government approvals that were to come through uh, took some more time than we expected, which has led to some delays around that. But again, I think we, we are not very significantly delayed on that side. 
yeah yeah okay sure sir uh thank you sir thank you wish you all the best thank you the next question is from the line of arjun khanna from kotak mahindra asset management please go ahead Uh, thank, thank you, you. Uh, thank you sir for taking my question uh, the first question is on the spectrum side of it so uh, in discussions with uh, our uh, clients uh, i understand off take has been uh, slightly lower like you mentioned given global circumstance uh, in, when we have our discussions is there any uh, negotiation or uh, uh, rethink in terms of pricing of these uh, particular uh, products or uh, that's a discussion that's not come up given that they are uh, giving profit warnings So Arjun, whenever you discuss something of that sort with clients, there will always be pricing discussions that come through. The sure. endeavor at our end, at, at our end, is always look at what are the, uh, the 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 technological positions that we can change around them. How much can we produce from the existing facilities? How better to look at efficiency so so that we can protect margins. But without a doubt, there are some pricing pressures also that are there. The only good thing, Arjun, that I can say is that the basic theme. with respect to let's say the uh, the customer thinking about their own supply chains and and robustness of their supply chain i think that has not shifted that remains pretty much well in shape even today so while there may be some uh, off and on discussions that will keep happening i don't think the, the basic theme under underlying has changed at all Sure, uh, and in terms of uh, the way we look at the spec and piece, uh, in terms of what rows uh, we would like to generate from it, uh, even post these discussions, uh, do you think that number needs to come down, or are we yet confident of uh, the 20 plus percent rows that we are targeting? So again, uh, if you are looking at it from an FY24 perspective, may not be a hundred percent there uh, in terms of our. But I can still tell you the return on capital employed that we are generating is still beyond that number, right? When we talk about the 20 percent plus number, I think the the way we look at it in in the very long term, what is the, the number that we are happy with? I don't think that position from our perspective has shifted any bit. Sure, perfect. Uh, so my second question is just on the PTFE. While we talk of full ramp up in FY26, I uh, just want to understand. Uh, while we know what the rated capacity is uh, in terms of output, uh, just on the base uh, of commodity grade, what would be the output that's possible to generate from our current equipment? Currently, I think it is about 5,000 tons. If I am right, give me just one sec. I I will look at it. PTFE. 5000 yeah rated capacity 5000 about 90% you can get to uh, again it is it also depends on what kind of grade you are producing so that's the way we look at it so sure. wishing you all the best thank you thank you the next question is from the line of nishan shah from mk global please go ahead yeah hi sir thank you for the opportunity uh, my basic question is on the uh, PFB segment. Uh, what will be the percentage of the sales uh, under the uh, contract and the spot uh, in India versus uh, outside India? That's the first question. Contracted sales in India and outside India. Yeah. So roughly speaking, our our overall contracted sales would be in the range of 60 to 70 percent, right? Which covers all our uh, contracted positions, both locally and globally. Now. What is the difference between that in South Africa, Thailand, Hungary versus what is it in India? Is a difficult position. I will have to look at those numbers separately. Uh, okay. And uh, from the uh, pricing point of view, what will be the difference uh, when it comes to a uh, renewal? No, I didn't get the question, uh, Nishant. So basically, uh, what will be the pricing levels uh, when it uh, in the uh, contract versus cost uh, when it comes to a renewal point of view? So that can't be it. Can't be looked at it from that perspective, Nishan. Uh, contracted positions that get created are also, to a certain extent, a formula in pricing that comes in. Uh, it is not based on a certain fixed price position that you create. So uh, I don't think if you are looking at it from that perspective, that's the right way to look at it. Okay. Okay. And uh, my third question uh, will be. Uh, uh when we say the packaging uh, business is not doing well uh, going ahead so what will be the impact on the uh, competitors who are only doing uh, the uh, packaging business or uh, what will be the impact on the ongoing concerns 
So, Dishan, to be very frank, I think uh, when you look at Q1 numbers, which are now out in the market, if you look at those, you will find that SRS performance, both on average percentages, EBITDA margins, or return on capital employed also in the business, is probably much better than any of our international, local, or global competitors. So, so I would really say that SRS performs much better than some of our peers. Uh, some of the peers also have businesses which are which are kind of combined businesses with lamination and others as well, which really uh, does not give us the ability to analyze. But given our value-added product portfolio, we still believe that we are probably one of the best in the industry. Okay, but uh, do you see uh, the uh, big players will survive uh, this down cycle and the uh, small players are getting out of it? So basically a consolidation in the uh, industry. To be very frank, Nishan, there are a large number of players in the industry today. Uh, there will be some, uh, let's say, consolidation that will happen in the industry at some point in time. When, where, why, that only time will tell. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rohit Sinha from Sunili Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello. Uh, thank you for taking my question, sir. Uh, so one question is on the uh, new capex on the BOPB side. Uh, so that this uh, 275 crore kind of capex, uh, what could be the asset? Uh, yeah, voice is not clear. Could you repeat your question, please? Yeah. So on the this side, BOPB capex side, uh, the new uh, capex which we have announced. So just wanted to understand what would be the asset turn and the uh, margin profile uh, for this company. And uh, and then uh, uh, is it the same uh, uh, product which uh, Expro India is making currently, or uh, one which they have discontinued some time back? So, so uh, it's a completely new product, Rohit. It is not a uh, existing product. It is a BOPP film, yes, but it is not uh, let's say a BOPP uh, 10.5 meter type of line that we have today. It's a completely different product. We believe it is. The project's uh, realistic IRR should range in the range of about 16 to 18 percent. That's how we are looking at it. Uh, the the way we look at it uh, is roughly a payback period of about five five and a half years should come through, and it should be value accretive uh, going forward. Also, I think it is uh, uh, old from from the perspective that it is. Uh, a film that will get required in India's uh, requirements of electronic manufacturing, which is great. Be it in the EV side or the battery side, uh, that, that's something that will uh, it will need some of this film and maybe certain other specialized films that, that go on in future. So it's a foray into that segment where we, we think uh, it will add to value from, uh, uh, let's say, entering into the, those high growth segments. Okay, okay. Uh, so, so um, would, um, just on the margin side, would be uh, fairly uh, fair enough to say that the could be slightly uh, uh, the northern side of, of the current uh, normal VOPP and profit side. Look at it from where current pricing is certainly should be, but we have seen differential pricing. So, on an overall basis, it should be more accurate than let's say a VOPP position today. But then margin should be really better than, uh, let's say, uh, the current BOPP state. Okay, okay. And and just on the aluminum file business, uh, uh, what is the status right now there? And uh, uh, when should we... I think I talked about it. It is under commercialization. It is under uh, final, uh, let's say, installations. Hopefully, in, by the end of November, early December, we should see uh, capitalization of the project and commercialization as well. Okay, okay. That is on my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, in order that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, we request participants to please limit the questions to two per participant. The next question is from the line of Keur Pandya from ICICI Prudential Life Insurance. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, so I just want to understand just a clarification. So the presentation mentions about the outlook uh, that uh, uh, the current inventory rationalization may last for two more quarters related to specialty chemicals. Uh, and your comments you mentioned that probably H2 would be better or Q4 should see uh, better growth and overall growth for specialty chemical uh, as a product segment. So just if you can just clarify uh, 
uh, or better on this specialty chemical that could be helpful. So clear. I think I was fairly clear in in my communication. Q3 should be better than Q2. <coughs> Q4 should be better than uh, Q3. Overall, from an H2 perspective, uh, we will do better than H1 in the specialty chemical business. Also, when you look at it from an annualized perspective, comparing FY23 to FY24, I said even despite whatever has happened in H1, we believe we should be able to grow the business in single digit numbers on a revenue perspective. So that's the, the position that I had made. If that's unclear, please let me know. Perfect, clear. And uh, when you say that uh, a single digit growth, that is for specialty chemical rights, not for the chemical uh, yes, yes. segment as a whole. Yes, please. Okay, thank you. I'll get back in the queue. All the best. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Rohan Gupta from Novama. Please go ahead. Rahul, sir, good evening and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, first question is on our uh, confidence, which we still have that in specialty chemicals, uh, with the year and FY24, we still will be able to end in a positive number. This is primarily driven by the four new agrochemicals and two pharma intermediates, which we have launched. If we adjust for that, do you see that there could have been big growth? Or what is the growth contribution coming from these, two, these uh, six new products launched? Okay, so the six new products are only where the, let's say, commercial quantities have been sent to the customer. These have not been factored into the number that I have been talking about. They are very small today. Okay, so this is basically... I have said that we have launched six new products, four in pharma, two in agro. Four in agro, two in pharma, right? But yeah. uh, I have not factored in any revenue positioning of those those uh, products in the number that I am talking on an overall perspective. Those will probably come out much later in time. Okay, so so the growth trajectory which we are still confident about in specialty is primarily come coming from that the inventory rationalization is broadly over. However, we still see that the many global companies are still giving profit warnings and. For the calendar year, we are still talking about a big growth scenario. So, I, I mean, uh, it's the same. there may be some kind of disconnect what these global companies are uh, talking right now for Q3, uh, what we are looking in a Q3 growth. Okay, Don, I can talk about my, uh, my position, right? Uh, this is uh, the, the positions that we are taking on this are in uh, discussions with some of our key customers. Uh, some of the order positions that they have talked to us about in terms of just delaying the orders, uh, they have in fact talked about multiple new uh, agrochemical intermediates also, which are kind of not uh, not factoring into this. You've seen us uh, talk about a new uh, investment of 235 crores in a new pro uh, product. We we kind of will probably get to over 600 metric ton of that product. It is also a product that can future in the future become a new AI that, that we, we believe we can do for the customer. So all of this is based on our customer discussions, our order book and our, our positions going forward. Uh, specifically to be able to answer what the customer is, is talking about in generic, very difficult. But uh, my, my commentary is largely on the basis of what we are seeing and discussing with the customer. That's very good, sir. Uh, sir, the second question is on our CAPEX. We have commissioned roughly 1100 crores so far in H2. We initially guided for roughly 2400 crores plus kind of in chemicals and overall CAPEX guidance was some 3000 crores plus. So what is the number, uh, what is the CAPEX output right now? Have we revised that? So for FI24, I believe we will still get to that 3000 crore number subject to the land. Uh, for FY25, I think again the guidance of uh, let's say 2800 to 3000 crore remains with the new projects also uh, in parallel starting to get uh, let's say uh, established and, and money spent on that. I think we should be in fairly good shape to get to that number. Uh, again, the basic criteria of that as 80% chemical business still remains wrong. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Avijit Takela from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, Rahulji. Thanks so much for taking my questions. Uh, just a couple on the chemical segment. First, on the segment margins, uh, you know, they've come down a little bit this quarter to about 24.4 at the EBIT level. Uh, I understand this is probably to do with operating leverage and maybe a little bit of pricing pressure. 
but how should we sort of think about these margins you know can they sort of trend back towards the uh, older levels of last year or so in the next uh, you know next few quarters so again uh, abhi ji what i have said in the past also is that uh, in one of the quarters we have seen a margin of 35% a bit margin right we had said that that's not a sustainable position i right? given our our position on this we had said that uh, on an annualized basis margins ranging between let's say uh, let's say in the range of about 26 to 30% range should should be something that we should be able to achieve uh, again to be very frank about it we don't look at it on a quarter on quarter basis i think it is best to look at it on an annualized basis this quarter what you've seen as margins are probably in the range of about uh, 24 and a half percent uh, last uh, even when you look at it from a h1 perspective we were probably about 26% so i think we are fairly well within that range that we have spoken about it's it's business rohan uh, sorry abhiji and to to be to be very frank about it is not linear it will have its ups and, ups and downs what i can what i am uh, kind of telling you is that there is conviction on capex there is conviction in terms of order book that we have and that's in fairly good shape so that's how we look at it uh, abhiji uh, not really a quarter on quarter position that we look at right sure uh, understood thank you and uh, the other question was just on the uh, revenue side uh, would it be possible to share the specialty chemicals growth for the first half i know in one q you had mentioned uh, plus is it unfortunately that remains where it is only annual basis you will be able to give you the numbers around it but let's say uh, like when we were talking about it on q1 and q1 perspective where we had same uh, uh, said that it is grown significantly on an h1 perspective uh, the growth is probably not as as much it is probably flat to slight negative okay got it great sir and one last thing from my side uh, you did speak about the expectation of uh, uh, you know in enhanced pricing in the fluorochemicals business uh, next year uh, so again i mean if you could give us some sense of what sort of uh, you know price increases we might we could expect potentially next year mm-hmm. Only too early, Ravi Ji, to be able to answer that. Okay, fair enough. Sir. Thank you so much. All the best. Thank you. The next question is from Archit Joshi from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, I just have one on uh, some global issues uh, in your conversations. If you can uh, help us explain uh, the way the business has been carried out on the inventory front. uh what we are made to understand that the mncs were holding let's say four to six months of inventory in the last two three years uh, looking at a uh, strong demand uh, on the farm side uh, wherein our growth were also uh, quite strong uh, and certain macro conditions have sort of created this inventory snowball uh, due to which our growth also has been impacted so i was just trying to understand if there is any correlation with the level of inventory that our customers or mncs were holding and let's say that uh, in the ensuing quarters maybe the next year when the base is normal uh, if they shift back to uh, inventories which are lower than what they were uh, they were last two to three years ago maybe when the growth was quite strong would that have an impact on our growth also in fy25 archit to be very frank about it i think you are answering the question yourself you are absolutely right that there was a, a position on this that was being created uh, to, to, because of the fact that post covid some of the supply chain issues have eased out and again i think one of the larger issues here is also the fact that interest rate cycles globally have gone up very very significantly over the last let's say year or so right when when we look at it i think the cost of holding inventory has becoming has become dearer because of that some of the customers are facing working capital pressures which is therefore leading to uh, to let's say delaying of some of the orders also what has happened is because of the fact that supply chain issues that were there in terms of delivery availability cost of the container uh, shipping material out availability of containers i think that has kind of eased out very significantly and therefore people are saying that it is important to be able to keep it like that and uh, uh, keep a lower inventory because again it boils down to the cost of carrying the inventory now whether it has gone to 180 days or 270 days and it has now come to 30 days or 60 days i really don't know or shit uh, that's something that is very very different for each customer each uh, position that he is taking 
very difficult to be able to comment on where the inventory levels are today. It's just a, a position that some of the customers are talking to us about and uh, uh, we, we are seeing that kind of a delay happening when we talk to the customers. So that's where it is, Archit. Uh, sure, sir. Understood. Uh, thanks for the clarification. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhaskar Chakrabarti from Jefferies. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, good evening, Rahulji. Uh, one question on the specialty chemicals. Uh, the recovery uh, in demand that you are seeing from your customers over the second half of the fiscal, is it mainly driven by uh, two to three products, key products, or is it more broad-based? So, to be very frank, Bhaskar, Bhaskar I, I said it in, in the earlier part of this conversation also, that we believe that some of the uh, key products that we have, we have seen a lower demand and order getting kind of shifted out to Q3, Q4, that's where we are saying that some of these will uh, come back in. Uh, some of the new product launches that have happened over last year uh, and the plants that have got commercialized will will also give in, uh, let's say, from, from a revenue perspective and, and values perspective. But uh, majority of that is not from, let's say, the new product launches that we have talked about. Uh, that's something that will come in over uh, Q3, Q4. BASF has roughly spent Q3, Q3 and Q4, and uh, Syngenta is probably more towards Q4. So that's that's how uh, the global commentary read out. Sure, sir. Thank you. And uh, this last question is uh, that in uh, some of the other players' cases, we have seen that they have indicated that uh, customers have sometimes come back and asked for higher volumes, but then after a little while, they have again toned it down, and then again they have changed. I mean, the volatility in their assessment of their own demand has been very high. Uh, have you also seen that, or uh, you are seeing a betterment in that uh, predictability? Depends on customer to customer. To be very frank about it, I don't think it is generic in nature for me to be able to comment like that. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Yash Shah from Investec. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. So I had two quick questions. Uh, the first question was regarding on the PTFE side. Uh, we were expecting PTFE. to sell around. Yes, PTFE. Uh, yeah, sir, we sir, expecting... Slightly louder. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so sir, we were expecting to sell somewhere around 1,000 to 1,500 tons of PTFE uh, in the current financial year. Uh, since the project has been delayed by a couple of months, so what, what is our revised expectation now that we'll be able to sell on the PTFE side? Yes, I don't think I ever said that we will expect 1,000 to 1,500 tons in FI24. I never said that. Uh, maybe that was your expectation. The way we are looking at it is that uh, some of the sales, probably about 100, 150 tons per month, should come through in Q4 FI24, and the full ramp up probably by end of exiting FI25 is what we will look at. Okay, okay, fair enough, sir. And the second uh, question was on the technical textile business. Uh, during first half, we were expecting pressure because of the lower capital lectum prices. Uh, since the prices have started holding up, in fact, have increased uh, starting September, uh, can we expect better revenue on the technical textile business in the second half, sir? Even if the prices go up 30%, revenue could go up 30%, it doesn't really matter uh, because at the end of the day, majority of the capital lectern, be it on a dollar margin basis or a rupee margin basis, is a pass-through. It could be a 30-day pass-through or it could be a 45-day pass-through depending upon the pricing methodology. But how does it make a difference? Okay. Fair. Got it, sir. Thank you. Thank you for answering. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Madhav Marda from... FIL, please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for your time once again. I just wanted to understand a bit on the pharma ramp up. Uh, I think you did mention the PPT about uh, some pickup expected. So, by when do we is it uh, more Q3, Q4, or uh, how do we expect that to pick up? We are talking about the pharma ramp up in a specialty chemical space. Yeah, th that's right. That's right. So, uh, Madhav, to be very frank about it, I think the agro traction has remained strong. Uh, pharma PIP plant should pick up in, uh, let's say, more towards Q4. There are uh, products that have already been sent out for, uh, for, for let's say, as a, a qualification lot. 
three or four products have uh, have already been produced in the PIP, and uh, I, I certainly believe, believe that the full revenue potential will get realized more in FY25. Okay, understood, understood. And what is the gross lock in the pharma PIP uh, project? No, I have not broken it down as such. Okay, got it. All right, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitin Agarwal from Dan Capital. Please go ahead. Thanks for taking my question, sir. On uh, on the fluorochemical business, uh, you know, when you look through in FY twenty five twenty six, uh, you know, do you broadly stay with the volume assumption uh, guide uh, uh, assumption that you would have had earlier? Sorry, Nitin, could you just uh, go a bit slower? I have been unable to gauge your question. On the on the fluoro uh, fluorochemical business, fluoro specialty business. Uh, do we, uh, when you look through the FY25-26 uh, sort of broad volume estimates for our projections for ourselves, are we largely hopeful of, uh, you know, maintaining the similar, uh, doing the similar volumes as we would have probably thought earlier, despite whatever happened this year? Floor of speciality you are talking? Yes, sir. Uh, sir I mean the, the rep gas business, uh, the floor chemical business. Floor so of rep gas business. See again, I think the, the way our plants have come up and uh, and the 32 plants should get commercialized, I think we are in fairly good shape. Given where current revenue positions are, given where current margins are, even then I think the IRRs are probably better off than what they were when we had initially envisaged the project. So we are probably in better shape than worse shape. And then in terms of the dynamics of the uh, of the industry, has anything changed, uh, you know, barring the, te you know, uh, with respect to the Chinese dumping and all of that that has really happened, with structural changes, uh, maybe some of your assumptions? So not really to a certain extent. The, the, the change in assumption uh, is that, let's say, uh, uh, another player wants to come up as capacity, some capacity has come up. There has been some rationalization that has happened on, on that. Uh, U.S. quota positions are now frozen and have, will play out from January of 25, 24 onwards. So all of those have happened. But again, I don't think it has made us think about, uh, let's say, shifting some of the positions that we are taking on the business. Those remain in fairly good shape and uh, going forward also are positive. The lastly, you can squeeze in. So on the floor of specialty part, uh, this year you said it's a single-digit growth business. In the past, we've grown at an extremely strong growth uh, rate in the I, I think you are mis misreading it, Nitin. I never said that it, it is a single-digit growth business. I have said that this year, even if we get to a single-digit growth position on the floor of speciality side, given where the market dynamics are, I think it is much better than, let's say, growing 40% last year. That's what I have said. So please read it properly. I am not saying that it is a single-digit growth business going forward. For FY25, FY26 and onwards, given our traffic intensity around it, we still believe a 20% plus growth is still possible. Okay, that's what I want to share. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from Krishnan Parwani from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Rahul ji. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Just two small clarifications. So the first clarification, um, I'm not sure if I heard it correctly, but did you mention that your HFC volume for CY24 for U.S. market is tied up, or did I hear something wrong? I said calendar 24 for, for some of our key customers, not the full one. Okay, some of your key customers, the volume is tied up. Yeah, so, okay. It's very encouraging, Krishan. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah, that's that's why I needed the clarification. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. And the second clarification, um, or rather a question, rather it, it is. So you highlighted single digit volume growth, or, or sorry, revenue growth for specialty business in FI24. Just wanted to check whether you have any kind of guidance on the fluorochemical side for FI24. Again, I think the way we've always looked at it, volumetric position. Given where the 32 will come up, given where uh, U.S. demand positions are, given where, uh, let's say, PTFE uh, should kick in to a certain extent, given where pricing expectations are, uh, even if we could get to a flat number as to last year, we should, I think, be in very, very good shape. But I think as of now, it looks a bit difficult. Okay, no problem. Pricing is down, to be very frank. Okay, understood. Uh, thank you for these clarifications and wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vishnu Kumar from Avendis Park. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, thanks for your time, sir. Uh, specifically on the rev gas volumes that you mentioned on, um, in terms of US, uh, the expectation is would be for 24, would it be higher than 23 uh, or how should we look at it? No, could you repeat question, Vishnu? No, for the volumes contracted or rather uh, your expectation for 24, the volumes that you might export to US, would that number would be? Yes, sir, correct. So when you look at calendar 24 versus calendar 23, yeah. Which would then be a good comparison to make. I think our endeavor is to sell higher in the U.S. market. While some of that has got tied up, uh, it will take a lot of effort to be able to do that. I think we should be able to achieve it. But this will be more towards 32 than 34. See, again, then I will also have to tell you what volumes are of 125, what is the position that I am taking with each of the customer, that I don't want to do. Understood, sir. Sir, and also, uh, when you when you say that your bit margin, medium term, you would want to keep it between 26 to 30, Any what would, what would be the picking order between the REF and the chemical business? Which would be higher, lower, and uh, any any risk that you see to this number? Sorry, Vishnu, your voice is, is kind of not uh, not appropriately coming. Could you repeat that question, please? Yeah. So, so when you when you uh, when you say that the EBIT margin range that we want to keep in between 26 to 30 percent, um, which segment uh, with the ref for in terms of picking order, which one will be higher, the ref and the spec? I mean, the specialty business, and uh, if there is a volatility or a higher risk, which one of these businesses would be that? On a ROCE basis, again, uh, on a uh, on, let's say on an EBIT margin basis, it really depends on uh, how each of the business segments is playing out. It is not a, uh, always true to say that a speciality chemical business will always be at 5 percentage point higher than uh, fluorochemical business. On a generic basis, we believe speciality chemicals on a long term basis should give us higher ROCEs compared to fluorochemical business. But when you look at it on a positional basis, for one quarter, one year, depending upon where markets are, the, the positions could be different. FCB could be going through a boom, while speciality could be doing a stable positioning. So it really does depend on, on what is the uh, a position on that side. If you take five-year averages, I think speciality should be higher. Understood, sir. Thanks, sir. All the best, sir. Thank you. The next question is from Mr. Jason Sones from IDBI Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for taking my question, sir. So just a simple question I had in terms of uh, the, our intermediates which go into agrochem and pharma. Just wanted to know from a ballpark perspective, uh, what percentage of that goes into patented molecules and what percentage of that into generic? Uh, unfortunately, that's something that we can't track. There are products that go into both. Because these are not AIs in nature, it is impossible to be able to say. Okay, sure, sir. Okay. And uh, so the next question is, what percentage of a specialty chemical business is contracted in terms of, uh, in terms of, uh, is contracted basically? Almost 90% of the business, 95% of the business is contracted. Some are two-year contracts, some are three-year contracts, some would be one-year contracts also, some in six months order-based contracts also, but majority of it is contracted. 90% is contacted. So, so, so uh, just uh, in a follow-up to that, I just wanted to ask, you know, uh, just last six months, this Chinese dumping has started and this intensity has come to in a large way. So, in terms of these already established contracts, already made contracts, do you see any structural changes to the contracts? Of course, there will be some de-escalation, you know, raw material uh, prices coming down. Do you see any structural structural changes to this contract? What, what, what the time I'm, of renewal, there yeah. may be some, some other, let's say, positions that the customers would like to create. But I think, again, uh, you have to understand that the global theme that is playing out is DSK. Right? So while there may be some, let's say, positional play that will play out, globally the de-risking theme continues, which is what we said, uh, I think, in the earlier commentary also. Which, uh, therefore, means uh, uh, that when we look at it, uh, while there may be a contract-to-contract -contract position that plays out, uh, if we are setting up facilities for a customer, we will want to see, let's say, more longer-term contracts coming through. Uh, again, we have been very flexible with the customers in terms of getting better positions with them, getting newer, newer products, more complex products, which has, which has helped us in time for us being able to get, let's say, better shares from customers. So that's how we look at it. Sure, sir. So, but here and again, what what happens is the de-risking is a visa vis against cost competitiveness. So that's that was the only sense of asking that. 
to be very frank about it the customer would want to buy from me at a chinese price if that's possible right but right 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 sir right, is the debate that will always keep happening right sir right sir yes yes and we have to match that and just one final question from my side i have never said that we have to match that i'm saying we will always have to look at the economics of the position that works out in a manner that can be profitable growth for us right sir right sir and so just one final question from my side in terms of hfp if you could give us a revenue contribution for major geographies you mentioned key markets such as us middle east india if we could get well, uh, so i don't want to give from a uh, geography to geography perspective but let's say exports is about 60% uh, of hfts and the balance would be domestic 60 65% okay okay thank you so much sir thank you so much thank you thank you very much we'll have to take that as the last question i would now like to hand the conference back to mr rahul jain for closing comments thanks everyone i hope you have been able to answer if not all some of your questions i hope to that each one of you continue to remain safe and healthy if you have any further questions we would be happy to be of assistance we hope to have your valuable support on a continued basis as we move ahead on behalf of the management i once again thank you for taking the time to join us on this call bye bye